What's up, everybody? This is BB Davis for BB Love Sports, where sports and gaming is the exquisite fusion. All right, we had a little bit of confusion there with this whole halftime here with the face off of the MEX Walk Challenge, South Carolina State University Bulldogs and Jackson State Tigers. The score, the score, the score is zero. South Carolina State JSU Fort. We got about a minute 13 left in the second quarter here. And they're at second and two live. If you are not there in Atlanta at the stadium watching the game, it's live on ABC. This is the 18th year for the MEAC SWAT Challenge. And I am so proud to be covering for the MEAC Division Conference and also covering for South Carolina State Bulldogs. I want to give a special shout out once again to South Carolina State Athletics for the opportunity to cover with women and diversity in sports and in media. So I did check in with some of the professionals of the Bulldogs on press row and I can't get any immediate stats right now but that is pretty pretty normal because you know you're in a whole new setting than just your own press box and so um, right now they will be giving the stats once they get them underway in the first half to those who are already there just give me a little backstory here and then those who are not there like myself then they will be giving uh those stats a little bit later but what I am seeing is that it's not an aggressive, aggressive type play that Jackson State is playing with keeping South Carolina State Bulldogs from off the boards right now. But they are taking advantage of, of course, uh, a team that has lost a lot of their players from last season. And the same with them, but they are taking advantage of not seeing a hardcore defense right now because they are getting through those tackles they're getting their completed pass um there is no challenge right now to do any type of turnovers or interceptions it's enough time in the pocket for the quarterback to make those connections with those passes and then they're running it without much interference from the Bulldogs. Jackson State Tigers are running it, and they're going into the end zones there and getting close. They're getting their first downs and all of that. So we really need, at this point, to see the Bulldogs wake up, um, going into the second half, regroup, go into that locker room, and see what can happen. Because right now, it's not something that's taking the Bulldogs for a wonder. Jackson State Tigers aren't bringing that, but they are taking advantage of what's not or what should be presented to them, what's not being presented to them, what should be presented to them. So right now, I think it's wonderful that we do have um, the game coverage on ABC. So right now we have a lot of the uh, commercials that are going into play. And I just can't wait to see some of the reactions on the boards. But what we have right now is going into halftime. So hopefully we get to see two great bands come forth as the teams make their way into the locker rooms. Um, uh, right now we're still with a minute 10, second and 12 with uh, South Carolina State and Jackson State. But we will see the sonic boom of Jackson State face off with the 101 South Carolina State. And so if you are there cheering on either team or if you're just there because you're cheering on the whole experience and love for HBCU, that is wonderful. All right. So Jackson State has possession of the ball. And it was almost interception, but there we have a nice wake up there with uh, South Carolina State Bulldogs. They were able not to give him much gains at all. So we're now in the fourth down, and uh, we got about 20 seconds there 
And there's no stopping of the clock. They're letting it wind down so we can finish up this first half. Again, that score is 0-14 with Jackson State in the lead there. But I feel we're going to have a nice turnaround because it's not anywhere near a blowout right now between both the teams. We do have a whistle. Okay, so yes, on September 2nd in the Queen City, it's going to be the Carolinas of the Carolinas. Okay, the Tar Heels, shout out to my girl Bird, graduate of Carolina, and shout out to me. Okay, we are Gamecocks family without a doubt. So that is going to be the matchup on September 2nd. Love to see it. So listen, we're going to have the flags in the air, and it's just going to be wonderful. Um, and shout out to those Gamecocks. That's that's really going to be a wonderful matchup. I love seeing when the Gamecocks match up with the Tar Heels. Okay, shout outs. And then, of course, I love seeing at the end of the year, we have Clemson uh, facing off with, uh, um, Lord, I just lost my thought there. I just lost my thought with the Gamecocks. <laughs> oh my god. Whenever I talk about my game Cox, I just somehow tend to lose my brains. <laughs> okay, but anyway, that's gonna be a great matchup. Alright, so we're gonna get back to this game here with South Carolina State and Jackson State. And um They're gonna try and do a 30 yard attempt here. Oh my Oh my. Jackson State. They're going to go for it. Let's see. It's good. It's good. And they took it. So the score is now 17 to 0. Ended out the first half. Jackson State came to make some noise. And they have 17 to South Carolina State's 0. Ending with that. Uh, it's just showing how they're willing to take some chances there. But I do see in the second half uh, that we uh, do get a little bit of change there. Okay, again, we made those announcements that came from uh, South Carolina State Athletics Department. And those announcements that Coach Buddy Pooh is going to be retiring um, this would be the last season. So this would be great if uh, they could get that win tonight. But again, Coach Buddy, with all the standing coaches across the boards for the HBCU, he is in the lead for the most wins. And then again, like I said, on the first part of the broadcast, Coach Buddy also has more wins than some of the coaches that have gone on to retirement um, before him. So we want to give a shout out to Coach Buddy. That's right. You know, even before, just to give you all a little bit of backstory, even before broadcasting with South Carolina State, um, I always felt like I was a part of the Bulldog family. Um, with so much family, my maternal side of the family is from South Carolina. The majority of them is from South Carolina. And then my paternal family is from Tampa, Florida. Okay, I got the best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Can I give a shout out? Thank you. Thank you. So I've always felt that I was a member of the Bulldog family. It's a steeped in great tradition with many great coaches, great academia, um, just a great group of people at alumni. Um, when you have family and friends that go there, you know, when I was at John C. Smith, which was, um, which is my alumni, I represented the CIAA conference, and then I went on to UNC, C, Charlotte. Um, 
you know, for spring break. They would come to me and then I would go to them. You know, then you had your little boyfriend, girlfriend thing going on. And then you had homecoming. And then I had my cousins and them that was on the football team. And speaking of, since we're talking about football, let me give a shout out to my cousin, Macy Stevens. You know what it is. And I know that a lot of people um, probably uh, who know the players from past all the way up to present they heard these names because that was the squad that was a squad and he was on that squad with zeus you know i know there's some young guns now calling themselves zeus but the zeus who has incredible history with hbcu orlando rest in peace the zeus and he looked like the zeus too okay great dude he played with my cousin Macy at South Carolina State. They played under um, Coach Jeffries, Willie Jeffries, legendary coach, okay, legendary coach. And we were just all, we just a big part of the family and everything like that. So, you know, like when you had your cousins, when you had uh, your friends, all the people actually thought that I did go to state. So it has come full circle, being there for many moments, having so many great memories there, and then now to be broadcasting for the MIAC. I think that's wonderful. All right, so we're going to get into this. And thankfully, we see on ABC for a lot of people to see the well-known, extraordinary Marching 101 taking the field. And, of course, you hear some background noise here because we are enjoying as a family as well as me broadcasting for South Carolina State. So, hey, everybody. They're, we're not on camera. We're just right here. Come around and see them uh, come on the field. So we have everybody in different rooms here. All right. And we got the piccolo section and the flute section. You know, that's my section because I am a flutist since the age of six. So we're going to listen in to this halftime show. And if you're watching it on ESPN on ABC, that's wonderful. And if you're there live in Atlanta, that's wonderful as well. The Marching 101. Oh, this is so cool, everybody. And they look good. I'm a band person. They're playing the classic Mary Jane girls in my house. Ah, and they're showing that close-up of the Piccolo family. woo -hoo! So have you ever been on any of the marching bands? You already know how it is. I saw somebody's fez come off. No matter what comes off, as long as you don't drop your instrument, you keep going. That's the thing. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. This is a very good look, the Miyok Swak Challenge being shown on ABC, so I love that. And they're showing the flag girls, and let me tell you, being on the band, my girls who was on the flag, you know when you're out there practicing, I said, let me hold that flag. Thank you, you know, because the way they toss it makes it seem effortless. That flag is heavy. That flag is heavy. And I was like, you got to show love. Okay, they're showing some of the alumni in the stands. Look, I'm looking hard. The camera's on and off a little bit, so I'm trying to see what I can see. And I love the drone shots. Shout out to the drone person showing the whole routine. All right, we got the ladies of Champagne coming out. And I got somebody in here talking about Champagne Girls. Listen, they are Allen University uh, Yellow Jackets, so it's the ladies of Champagne. Champagne Girls, but it's the ladies of Champagne, okay? Let me handle my broadcast. <laughs> All right. I hope somebody has taped this. Yeah, you know they did. 
because this is one for the books. The Miyak Swap Challenge. Okay, so this was great seeing uh, the March of 101. And uh, South Carolina State always does such a phenomenal job here. So I'm going to just back up out of here. Everybody looked good. I love the formations. Um... And one good thing I will say, and I'm I'm not trying to be biased here, but I'm just going to lay on some facts. Um, many of those who have gone on from South Carolina State, you can find many of them as band directors around the United States for high school, for college. And that's just, you know, a really great thing uh, that you can see. It just shows the testament of how great um, that band is. Now, let's talk about Jackson State. Jackson State, the sonic boom, has such a nice solid sound. And when they say sonic boom, it's sonic boom. And that's what sets all of the different bands apart. They have their own vibe to them. And then you get to see the prancing J sets. The J sets just like the Ladies of Champagne are so well known, the choreography that goes behind that. But the J sets have always been so world renowned for their choreography and stuff like that. And I just think it's amazing to see um, how they do all of their routine. You know, it's just wonderful. Um, so, just talking a little bit about the history of the J sets. They originated in the late 70s um, in the Jackson, Mississippi area. And it's a woman's dance line. And they are part of the Sonic Boom marching band. Okay. And so. I just love their vibe and how much excitement that both bands uh, create. And it's, it's just wonderful. Um, make sure that you keep aligned of the marching bands. I think it's going to be December the 15th. That's just off the top of my head for... Um, the bands that's going to be there doing their thing. Of course, you know, with my family paternal being from Tampa and my maternal being from South Carolina, we cannot not talk about bands if we don't talk about the Marching 100 Rattlers and probably my baby brother, okay, was a part of the Marching 100. Five, yeah! <laughs> baby, don't tell me nothing about no HBCU because I know about the HBCU. All right, so this is just a relaxed type of uh, sport broadcasting here that you can just chill out and ride in your car with and just enjoy. And because I take you through different spectrums when we get back to the games, when we get off the games and all that good stuff. Um, so let me see here how I can uh, get this going. Let's get some...
see what we can get here. So I hope that you're enjoying some of this music as we go into the halftime. I can only imagine what is happening in uh, both camps of the Tigers and the Bulldogs. I'm pretty sure that some of the coaches are saying with uh, Jackson State, let's just keep running the ball. How are we doing it? Let's keep doing these plays and um, let's just look out for probably a tighter defense that's going to be happening. If we play the way that we're playing, we're going to score more. We can keep them at bay. All right. What's happening over in that locker room with South Carolina State? This is just only just off the top of my head here. Um, let's see. We got things falling apart. My bad there, y'all. But I could only think that with – um, Coach Buddy that they're saying we need to tighten up on our defense office. Let's try and get some turnovers. Let's get some stops. We can't let them just easily get into the end zone, you know? So that's what I'm talking about here. All right, let's see. Okay, we also have here, we get ready to show it. Okay, we're going to wait for Jackson State. They're coming up here. This is the Sonic Boom, so let's go. Nice formation. All right, so we got the Sonic Boom of the South, and that is Jackson State. Tires. Nice, crisp, full sound there. What's love got to do with it? You know what it is. We got to give that shout out to Tina Turner. Tina Turner passed uh, a few months ago, transitioning to with her ancestors. So this is wonderful. Nice touch there. Giving love to Tina Turner. All right, so the J sets are prancing. That's what they do, and they're on the 50-yard line. So if you're looking at this live, that's the J sets, the world-famous J sets doing that thing. Showing love, okay, to my section. Yes. And you know who else does a really good job of highlighting the piccolos? Hey, you know what it is. Rattler Nation, FAMU March at 100. Oh my God. Soaring up in the air, soaring up in the airs, okay? So, uh, both bands have done an incredible job. They look good, they sound good. Oh, we got the Tiger doing the Michael Jackson, a backflip there. Thank you, cameraman. We really appreciate that. I know the crowd <laughs> appreciated that moment there with Jackson State. So, that is so good. On ABC, we got to see the halftime show of both 
of the uh, marching bands for HBCU, South Carolina State Marching 101, and the Jackson State Sonic Boom. All right, so let's just get back here because it seems like we have trouble in the water here with South Carolina State, okay? We got to get on the boards. We got to get on the boards. So, everybody, guess what? Lock it in for my next recap here for the MEAC SWAC challenge and let's see if the Bulldogs get get on the board. Who would dominate? Who become victor? Will it be Jackson State Tigers that are in the lead now? Or will it be the South Carolina State Bulldogs? We shall see. I'm B.B. Davis. The people of sports where sports and gaming is exquisite fusion. And stay locked in. <laughs>